Hi everyone, this is Arik from Futurely and I'm here to cover another session of our Keyshot Crash Course and today we're going to be focusing on materials. The model I have right here is something I've made in Grasshopper and ZBrush and if you want to download it, it's available in the description. So if you don't have any ready model of your own, you can just use this one. I chose this model specifically because it has some thick parts and a lot of thin parts here that would make a lot of materials uh, more interactive to show and my showcase would be more to the point. So the material I have here is the matte white material and if you go to the search bar here and just type matte, what you're gonna get is some um, similar materials and I'm using the matte white one, you can use matte gray even and these are good to just express your volume in a passive way with nothing interesting going on Maybe you want to use it for diagrams, maybe you just want to see your model in this way, or you want to just keep it simple with your render so you can use these anytime you want. But if you want to do something more interesting, one of the ways would be going to liquids. And so I can just drag any of these here and drop them into my model. And the reason I really like liquids is because wherever it's thick, wherever your model is thick, what you get is uh, more volume scattering inside and you get it more expressed and the thinner parts become more transparent. So that kind of gives it a next level of interest happening there. So I'm just gonna drag and drop another material here. This is something you can do as a beginner, right? You can just drag and drop any of these here. But if you wanna go further, what you do is just double click on the material part over here and you get more access to what you can change as parameters. So maybe you can just change the color here, something else, and you can use the transparency distance to make it more transparent. So if you see it's 10 here, what you can do is either drag the slider here or another thing is you can just type the number you want here. And even if your slider doesn't go all the way there, what you can do is, for example, it's 200 here. I can just type 400 here, and that will go there still. So in Keyshot, don't worry about the scrolls here. You can always type a number and see what your maximum limit is. So this is cool. This is really cool looking already. And uh, another thing you can change here is if you go to the advanced menu, there's the color out a color that you can change and that what that will do is it will add another le level of color so wherever your model is pretty thin you're gonna get another color happening so the more transparency you have the more of the color out will come in and if you have less transparency you're gonna see less of that color so if I make it like 20 I'm seeing a lot less of that color happening but it's still there so I'm just gonna make this 200 I like it the way it is, and this way you're going to get a lot more interest result, interesting result happening. Cool. Um, so that's for liquids. Let's jump into metals. So for metals, what I'm going to do is go to the metal folder here and just drag one of these materials here on top of my model, and then double click on the materials menu over here. And what you get is the metal type that you can change. And if it's measured, what you get is a metal preset. And you can change it from gold to aluminum or platinum or magnesium. So you can go with any of these, right? Or you can just choose color. And instead of getting a metal preset, what you get is a color that you can change. And this is pretty cool. And let's see. Yeah. I think I like this color pretty much, but I think overall the material is looking too perfect. So we're going to jump into some textures. And for that, I'm going to go to material graph here and I can see my material here. And if you've never used the material graph before, that's totally fine. It's super easy to learn. So what I'm going to do is right click on this and then textures and then texture map. So you have two types of texture in Keyshot and texture map is a bitmap texture that you can bring from your computer. 
The others are procedural textures that you can change their parameters and get something else from them. So let's go with texture map. And if I double click on this, I can just go to somewhere in my computer and get a texture. And I'm going to get this one now. And if you're wondering where I got it, it's textures.com. All I did is register here and search for imperfect. And once you do that, you can get a lot of these textures. And what we need for this specific task is a black and white uh, texture. And you can see that how we're going to use it in a minute. So the way this works is if I go to the metal part here, if I double click here, you have a slider called roughness. And if the roughness is zero, you get a very shiny surface. And if you make it a bit higher, you're going to get a blurry surface. So this is more glossy, and this one is more matte, right? But what we need is to have some parts to be glossy and the other parts to be matte. And for that, we need this texture. So wherever it's black, wherever this texture is black, what we're going to get is um, a glossy surface. And wherever it's white, we're going to get a matte surface. And to do that, what we need is to come from here and drag it into this plus part over here and apply it to the roughness. And now, roughness is no more a slider, but it's controlled with this texture right here. And to understand this better, what you can do is double click on this texture here and just click on this button over here, which previews the color. And that way you can see your texture only. And I think this is too big right now. So what I'm gonna do is after double clicking on this texture here, I'm going to come to the width and height part over here of this texture map that we imported and change its size to, let's say, 1,000. All right, this looks OK to me. And um, if I go back to my model now, we can see what's happening, right? You can see some parts are shiny and some parts are more matte. And this is cool, but I think it's... Um, it's not so natural yet. That's because if I check out this uh, texture here, it's either so white or so black, and the contrast is too much, and we can change that if we want to. And to do that, without using Photoshop, what we can do is we need to texture, I mean, we need to change the texture here um, to something else before it goes to the metal material over here. So what we do is right click on this wire over here, and then go to utilities and then take the color to number here. There are so many others, but for this task, uh, we're going to be using color to number. So if I take that and I double click on this, I can see, and I'm going to have to preview color again. I can see I have some parameters I can change. And I'm going to be using output from and output to. And if I make this um, a higher number, you're going to see this whole thing is becoming more white, which means my model is becoming more um, matte, right? And then if I drag this back, you can see my uh, texture is becoming more darker, which means my model is becoming more shiny. So with this, too, you can start controlling your texture's contrast. And if I go back to my model now, I think this looks way better. And now we have some imperfections happening on our model. Maybe we can make this smaller. Let's try that. I can go back to my texture map here, and I can make this 500. See what happens. All right, I like this now. And another thing we can do is use the same texture and apply it to the bump. And what the bump does is if the roughness was changing the reflection style, right? If it was changing it from matte to uh, glossy and back, what bump does is that it adds or subtracts from the model. So wherever it's black, it goes in, and wherever it's white, it goes out. 
So I'm going to copy and paste this texture again, and I'm going to apply it to the bump. And what we get is wherever it's black, we're getting a dig in, and wherever it's white, it's going up, out. So this is cool, but I think it's a bit too much. And so if I double click on this texture here, I can go all the way down and I can find bump height. And I'm going to make that a little less, 0 0.5. So that's not too much. And I can change the width and the height for this specific one too. So let's do it 1,000. And let's go back and change this to 0 0.2. All right, I'm getting a slight imperfection on the surface, which makes it all worth it. All right, nice. So this way we can use textures, right? This is more or less the way. And we can use uh, color textures too. So we can maybe texture and texture map and get a, another texture for the color. But um, for this specific example, we're not going to cover that because it's a metal and we like the color the way it is we're going to do something else. We're going to do something like that, the, the texture map to the color in the next example where we cover the advanced materials. So for this task, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go textures again and I'm going to use one of these procedural textures that we use and I'm going to go with color gradient and I really like using it a lot in uh, Keyshot. And from there, I'm just going to go and wire it to the color. And what happens is if I double click on the color gradient and I'm going to just change these colors here to get a better understanding of what's happening. Let's make it into something more vivid. And what happens is you get a nice gradient happening from one color to the other. And the way it's happening is because I'm using the gradient type planar. Let's use a spherical maybe. What happens is I get something else. So this is in the middle and this is going outwards. And if I change the ramp over here, I can get more control over the gradient. This is really cool and this is really nice what's happening right now. Another a gradient type I really, really like is the view direction one. And that's the way this is happening, let me reset this for a second. What's happening is wherever I'm looking directly to the form, I'm getting this color. So at angle zero, I'm getting this color. At 90 degree angle, wherever the form is um, not looking at me directly, or I'm not directly looking at it, uh, and I'm looking at it with a 90 degree angle, I'm getting this color. This is cool and gives you a lot of interesting um, characteristics over your model. And if I change this a bit, I can get more control over where what happens in terms of color. I can even add another color here if I double click here and double click here to change the color. Maybe let's get, um, yeah, all right, <laughs> whatever, right? Let's see what we can do. Yeah, you can get really, really weird with this, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go with uh, maybe, let's do cyan, and let's do pink. Actually, this is not cyan. Just a second. All right, I like this now. I'm going to delete the one over here. Oops. Just a second. But this one. And yeah, I like it a lot now. Maybe let's just bring in some of that pink again. Yeah. All right. So you can see how that works. It's really nice. Um, and this was our metal material that we were going to go over. Let's jump into the advanced materials next and see what happens. All right, for the advanced materials, I'm just going to take any material here. Let's take matte white again. And then I'm gonna double click on this matte white here and I'm gonna go to type of the material. And instead of diffuse, I'm going to go to advanced over here. 
And then I'm going to go to the material graph and start making my material here. So here you can see you have the fuse, specular, bump, opacity, and you have some other materials. Mostly we're going to be using the fuse, bump, and roughness. So for that, I went to textures.com again, or you can get any of your textures that you already have, and I just downloaded uh, one of these concretes here. And the one I downloaded was this one, but you can take any of the others. But most of these have an albedo texture that comes with the download, and albedos will go to the diffuse slot in Keyshot. Uh, height or normal will go to the bump slot in Keyshot. I prefer using normal when it's available because it has one more dimension to it. So heights have black and white, so it can only go up and down. But uh, here you have uh, red, green, and blue. So it has three dimensions that you can go to. So it's pretty nice to use if you have a normal map. And then there's the roughness. So I have all of this downloaded and I'm going to use them in um, Keyshot directly. And so for this, I'm going to go to right click and then textures and then texture map here. Then double click on this and then go to this part here. So albedo goes to diffuse, right? The way we discussed it. And you can already see the color change to the concrete texture that I had. Downloaded from before and then right click here and I'm going to go to texture again, texture map, double click here. Bring in the other one, this normal map and this goes to bump, of course. And then maybe I'll just copy and paste this and I'll go ahead and take the roughness. And that goes to the plus icon here and then goes to the roughness, right? So this is all you need to make a full-fledged material uh, most of the time. And to edit this better, I'm going to go to one of the texture maps here and I can see that it's too big. I'm going to make it smaller. Let's make it 2000. Yeah, like this one. Uh, yeah, the others changed together. So this is really good. And the thing is, I'm seeing the bump map here. But uh, maybe we'll make this a bit more. So if I double click on this, I'm going to the bump height here and I'm going to make it two. But I'm not seeing the roughness. And that's because... Uh, you have to go to the advanced material here and you have to turn on your specular thing. So if you don't have any specular happening, um, you can't get any roughness characteristics happening on your surface. So you have to go to specular here and instead of black, let's just use white. And now I'm seeing my um, roughness happen better. And this is cool. And if But if I want to make it a bit more what I can do is what I, what we did before right click utilities and uh, color to number so this goes to color to number and then goes to roughness and if I double click on this I'm gonna preview the color here and I can see it's all too white that's why we don't see any differences happening so to do it, uh, to make it a bit darker what I'm gonna do is output to I'm gonna make it less so when I do that, we're going to get much more variance happening on our surface. Let's see it now. Yeah, much better. And we can see how it looks right now. I think the texture is still too big. Let's make it 1,000. Yeah, I think I like this a lot now. And you can see how the concrete works. So this is exactly what you have to do, right? You, all you have to do is get three textures. Albedo goes to diffuse. Roughness goes to roughness. And normals or height maps go to bump. And if you're using a normal map, make sure in your normal map you have normal map uh, ticked. So uh, if you want to get more creative with this, what you can do is right click and get another texture. 
maybe you don't have to use exactly the same one. So what I did is I went to textures.com and I searched for um, sci-fi here and I downloaded one of these uh, textures that I found and I only downloaded the height map from here so I can use the or you can even use the normal actually so you can download one of these and use it only for the bump I'm not using the uh, albedo or anything from this so from here um, I'm going to just get that normal map and just apply it to the bump slot here and that way you can see you have these <laughs> Uh, sci-fi looking textures happening so you can get as creative as you want with this and this makes the splash image actually that I uploaded a day ago on Instagram on my personal page so if I double click on this and I can change the bump height a bit more maybe make it two and we can see this much better now and maybe I don't want it to go up but I want it to go in so what I can do is instead of using two, I can do minus two or even minus three. And now we can see more variation happening on top of our model. And this is making it much more interesting. And we don't even need to model any of these details. We can just use a bump map. And uh, the way they work in Keyshot is super fantastic. So you can get a lot of detail on your model right away all right let's uh, cover one more thing here let's go to material graph again and I'm gonna bring in another texture that I have and I found this on Google um, I was just looking for agreeable textures and I found that it belongs to texturemate.com and I'm just going to get this texture here. Let me show you where it is. I just looked for a Gribble texture seamless and I just found this one and I downloaded it. And I'm just gonna use this one for opacity. And if I bring it to the opacity here, what happens is wherever my texture is black, the model just doesn't render. It just doesn't um, show up, right? It becomes fully transparent. And whenever it's white, it renders fully. But the thing is now it's still, it, it's interesting, but um, it's not what I'm looking for. I want it to either render or not. I don't want it half rendered anywhere. And I'm going to make this texture a bit bigger now, maybe 2000. And let's see. What we can do is, again, right click, utilities, add color to number here. And I'm going to make this visible. So this is what the texture is. And I need it to be either white or black to either render or not render, right? So again, I'm going to work with outputs and inputs. So actually for this, we're going to be using the inputs only. Let's go. Yeah, you can see now it's making darker parts darker. And this will make the whiter parts wider. And if we make this almost the same number, we're going to get either white or black. So if I make this 0 0.25, I'll make the 0 0.255. Yeah, we get this happening now, right? And even one could be good. Yeah, this is good. Maybe I'll make this texture larger, 4,000. Yeah, cool. So now what we get from this is if I turn off the preview, is this, right? We don't even need to model any of that. But what happened is basically this texture is being used to delete some of the parts and keep uh, uh, the other parts for us. And if I change the color to number here uh, to another number, let's go with like 
uh, 40 here and 41 here. We're going to get other parts to stay and the others to go. Right? Let's make this 1, 1, 1. See what happens. Yeah, I like this pretty much. It's pretty cool. And we can still see the roughness and everything else What that was still there. All right. Pretty cool. Um... I'm going to make this texture a lot smaller now. Let's make it like 1,000. Yeah. So you get this really glitched look over your model. <laughs> All right. Nice. I'm going to turn off the opacity for now. And I'm going to... Let's make this... 1,000. Or even smaller. 500. Let's make the others 500 as well. I'm going to, yeah, maybe smaller, like 100. And then what I'm going to do here is just save this. So once you're happy with your model, you can change its name here. And then just hit save. I'm going to go to architectural and concrete to save it. And anytime later that you want, you can just go to the folder that you saved it in and reuse your material. This was another material that I've made before as a preparation for this course. So you can see how that works out. Awesome. Let's jump into the next material. So the next material I'd like to cover is translucent ones. So I'm just going to the corresponding folder here and then take one of these materials here and drop it on our model. And here, what really sets this material apart is that whenever you have light coming in and you have some thin parts, uh, what you get is some other color that the volume of light gets um, scattered inside. And wherever it's thin, you get to see more of the subsurface color over there. So if I double click on this translucent material here, we have two types of color and surface and subsurface. Surface is these uh, parts that are thick and then you get the subsurface parts where the light comes in, it changes its color. If you wanna see more of the subsurface color, what you can do is dial up the translucency number here. And instead of 40, I'm just gonna go for 200, for example. And you can see we have more of the subsurface color coming in now. Maybe I can go for 400 even, or 500. All right, so you can see even other parts that were thick before, now we're seeing more of the subsurface color in those parts too. So with this type of models, especially this type of uh, material works really well for me. And we can just change the subsurface color to anything else. Right, uh, let's try, yeah, let's try green. Yeah, green is nice. And we can go with some subsurface color of green as well. But maybe let's make it a bit dark, right? So you can see, if you keep using the same similar colors, you can get some interesting results as well. You don't have to use completely different colors. And if I do white, completely white and that, it's still really, really good. And I like this very much now. So if you want to get more creative with this, what you can do is go to the material graph. And um, what you can do is apply maybe, um, let's see, a texture map. And you can still apply one of the bumps that we used from before. Maybe this uh, seamless Greeble texture that we used on the bump here. Let's see. I think it's a bit small. Or actually what's happening is uh, if I double click on this, it's specified that this is a normal map here, but it's not a normal map. So you have to turn that off for this to work properly. And it's working really well now. Uh, maybe I can make it bigger. The way I like to use my size is not use DPI for size. And I'm just going to go with, 
Uh, let's make a thousand and we can make the bump larger number here and yeah this looks pretty neat too so you can see how that works out you don't even need to use I, I think my image is a bit bright what I can do is go to the environment here and then dial down the brightness from here and if that doesn't work out really well you can go to your image and dial down your exposure All right, now we can see our model here with all the gribble happening on top. Maybe I'll just make this a bit larger, like 2000, and make the bump height a bit less. Make it more subtle. All right, I like it this way very much now. So we can see we have some bio looking material with a sci-fi uh, robotic elements happening on top. And I'm still going to save this material again. I'm going to go translucent, sci-fi, green. And I'm just going to save it right there. All right. That was the, the other material I wanted to cover. And we have some more materials that are kind of special that I'd like to show you. One of them is the light material and if you take any of these and apply it to your model it's just gonna start spreading light around well this doesn't make so much sense the way I usually like to use this is I go to edit and I add geometry like uh, let's go with a sphere and I just place the sphere somewhere that I like to have some light happening and I'll also make this smaller. I'm going to take the scale here. I'm going to make this a bit smaller there. Or actually, what I can do is go to scene and take this sphere here. Then you go to position and move tool. And you can dial in your own scale here. Let's go with 300. Yeah. This is pretty good. And I'll just duplicate this sphere. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate. I'm going to bring it somewhere else. Maybe this part over here so we can have some light over there as well. And all you have to do is drag this material on top of this guy and this guy here. And I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to link the materials so they both change together. And if I go to my material menu here and I go to the emissive color, what I can do is change the color of this uh, the lights and you can see that they're spreading light around these places and with a translucent material you get more of the light scattering inside so that's pretty nice another thing you can do is if you don't want the lights themselves visible you can turn off visible to camera from here so what happens is that you only get the light inside but you don't see the um, light bodies anymore and you can dial up the intensity if you want to let's make it like 20 so we have more light spreading around and that's how the light material works another cool material that you may want to try is the tune material I'm gonna hide my lights for now and the tune material is a pretty cool material especially especially for architects and designers if that like to use this type of uh, complex shapes but are unable to take some drawings from them. The tune uh, material is super easy to just drag and drop on your model. And what happens is that you get a, a drawing like element out of your model. And to make this better, what I'm gonna do is go back to my environment and I'm gonna turn up the brightness to one again and I'll go to my material, the tune outline material that I have, and you can change the contour color here. I'm just gonna make it completely black. You can even change the color of your element if you want to, but I'm not gonna do that for now. And you have your contour angle, which is the most important. So if you make this like 10, you're gonna get more of the 
uh, curves that are happening. So any time where the direction you're looking and the polygon that you have make a contour angle that's more than 10 degrees, you're going to get a contour over there. It's really, really nice to do. And if I make this 30, which is the one mostly used, you're going to get less lines. You can also turn up your contour width to instead of half a pixel, you can make it like one pixel, and that will make it better for you as well. So this is really cool. And you can turn up your shadow strength if you want more shadow in there. But of course, if you would just want a drawing, this is also nice. So if you want some more shadow in there, you can make it better here. And of course, you can have some transparency in there as well. So this is really nice too. So you can get some of the um, hidden elements behind your model to be showing up as well. And you have some really nice materials that you can use this way. So this is also really nice, uh, the one with the sketched gray that's happening. And you also have the one that looks more like a sketch. And you can always go uh, to the material itself and change its um, parameters. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's jump into another material. Let's do the occlusion material. This is cool, especially if you want to do um, either an overlay on top of your model or you just want to have a, some sort of a diagrammatic look on your model. Also, this is very good if you, for example, render one with a, another material and render this one separately, and then you can use this to emphasize the shadows of your model. And the way this works is that it doesn't drop shadows on itself. It just shows the occlusion shadows that it has. This is another special ma material that I wanted to cover. And then there are the more miscellaneous ones that you can use, like soap bubble and <laughs> rainbow and all of that. So this is all good, nice and dandy materials that you can experiment with. And there is the multi-layer material that I'd love to use. You can see they really bring out a lot of curvature out of your model and you can see how that works out. And if you like it, just use it. All right. Um, the last thing I want to show you is I'm going to sh show it to you with a matte material over here, matte white material, is the cutaway material, which doesn't work with uh, GPU mode. So I'm going to turn off my GPU mode here. And I'm going to use a cutaway material. But for this to work, we needed to have another uh, body here that will cut away a part of our model. So the way it works is we have two bodies. And the one that we apply a cutaway material to cuts away from the other, other model, right? So this is very good to take sections from your uh, model. And the way I use this a lot is I go to edit, add geometry, like a cube. And I'm going to go to scene. I'm going to make this a lot larger. Let's say 10 by 10 by 10. Maybe I'll make it smaller in this direction. And let's see. Actually, just a little bigger. All right, cool. And I'm going to drag it to where I want my model to be cut, like this. And now all I have to do is just apply a cutaway material on top of this. And I get a section of my model happening. Isn't this awesome? This is super awesome. So to not get this weird looking shadow over here, uh, I'd advise you to go to cube here and then move tool and just drag it up enough to uh, not be uh, crossing the ground. Also, I'm going to go to my model that I have here and I'm going to move it up a bit. And we have a section here. You might see artifacts like this and that happens when your model is not clean. So I deliberately made this model not clean enough to show you this. But this is also kind of okay. And then 
another thing uh, you would love to know about the cutaway material is if you go to the cutaway base here and then you can say no caps which will not fill these parts so you can have them as walls or you can say inherit caps and what that does is it just uh, uses the same material as the model for the caps and if you use color then you just get color and the reason this is happening is that I'm in the box that is using the cutaway material so if you get away from it a bit you're not gonna get that so if you go inside the box that is cut or the volume that's cutting away you're gonna get glitches like this so I would advise you to keep the box as thin or as small as possible and then there's the material part where you can just tell it what material to get. So for example, I can just go with um, a metal here and I can say it's measured and I can say gold. So now it's being cut away with gold. All right, let me get rid of this sphere and cube that I've made. I wanna show you another very nice uh, texture that I use a lot and that's the curvature texture. So if I go to the material graph of this material and I go to right click and I go to textures and I get the curvature texture and I'm gonna apply it to the color here to see it better and you might not see anything for now but if I double click on the curvature and this is kind of a rule of a thumb that you have to turn off or at least dial down your cutoff here so I'm gonna make it 0.01 and what you get is these three colors on top of your model. And the way these are being applied is through a negative, zero, and positive curvatures. So you have positive curvature here where your model has some sharp edges that is making hills. And where you have some sharp edges that are going down and making valleys, you have the negative curvature. And wherever that, that's between them, you get a zero curvature. So with the cutoff, you control the contrast between those. So if I make this 0.1, for example, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get a lot, right? I'm gonna get more zero curvature. And if I make it one, and I'm gonna get all zero curvature happening. So the more you dial this down, the more prevalent these three colors are gonna be. And if I change the radius, to 20 you're gonna get more of a blur happening and I like the way this is now and the way this curvature texture is being used a lot is to emphasize parts of your model especially if it's like this and it has a lot of curvatures happening so for example if I change this uh, model to a metal one I'm gonna get these colors on top of that and what I can do is maybe go zero curvature, I can make it gold. And positive curvatures, I can make it white. And negative curvature, I can make it gold again, but maybe darker. And this way you can see more of the curvatures and characteristics that are making up your model. Of course, if I make this uh, something more exciting. We can go even weird with this like we like to. So for example, uh, I'm just gonna go with green or greenish blue here. And for the positive curvature, maybe I can go with black. Actually, let's do po zero curvature. We can make it like white. So you can see how it works out, right? This is really, really nice. And maybe if I dial down the radius a bit, I can see more of that happening. All right, so the cool thing about all of this is that you can also download materials and other media from the cloud library that Keyshot provides. And if you're looking for a material specifically, you can just search for it here. Of course, c cloud library is used also for environments, backplates, textures and models and such. But for this session, we're going to be using materials. So for example, if I'm looking for, let's say, uh, a glass, right? Some more glasses here. All I have to do is type glass here and let it search. And 
Let's see what happens. Maybe this one looks cool. I want to try it out. I can just download it here and wait for it to pop up in my download section of my materials. And I can see that it's here. All I have to do now is just drag and drop it onto my model. Right? So it's very, very cool. And it provides tons of materials for you. Of course, you can also always make your own, but uh, having more options is always a good thing. The one I really enjoy is uh, Tarnished Metal here. That used to be one of the materials in Keyshot built in. It's not anymore, but you can still look for it in the cloud library. And all you have to do is download it. And I have it already downloaded here. So let's see. Um, I don't see it here for some reason. Let's just do tarnished. Yeah, looks like it's here for some weird reason. It didn't bring in the tarnished metal. But yeah, all you have to do is download it. And what happens is you just drag this and drop it on your model, right? And to change this further, what we can do is, since we have all the knowledge now, we can always edit um, what was given to us from the beginning. So if I go here, I can go to my material graph. I can see that it's using a curvature map. If I double click this, I can see that the cutoff isn't uh, low enough and I can make it low. So if, as soon as I do it at 0 0.01, you can see it's using three textures for negative curvature, zero curvature, and positive curvature. And I can also make the radius a bit bigger. Let's make it like five. So we can see how that works out. It's a very cool material that we can use. And another thing we can change here is um, maybe the scale of the maps. And if I come here, I can maybe change the scale to 10 to make that bigger. And I'm going to do the same thing for all of the others. But this one's the most important, so maybe I'll also make this like something like 50. All right, this is pretty cool. You can see how that works out. Uh, let's bring it down to 10. This is good enough. And maybe you want to just change the color of this texture, but keep the texture itself. So what you can do is um, right-click on this um, wire here and then utilities and this time we're going to use color adjust and that's what you use when you want to adjust the color and if I double click on it I can see that I have a colorize option that I can do and maybe I want it to be green so if I hit OK I'm going to see that now that texture that we had from before is turned into green this is pretty cool maybe I'll just go to curvature again and I'll change the cutoff to 0 0.1 or even lower, like 0 0.01 if I can. Yeah, and this looks really, really neat now. And basically what I just did is download a material from the internet. And with the knowledge that we learned in the past uh, session, uh, I just was able to change the material and adapt it to my needs. And what I can do now is just save it. Into the metals. And I'm happy with it. All right, so this was it for the second session of our Keyshot Crash Course. Today we covered materials as much as we can. If we didn't cover anything that you wish we did, Comment them in the comment section down below. If this was valuable to you, please share it with your friends and colleagues. It might be valuable to them as well. Like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell button so you won't miss the next session on environments, lighting, and cameras. This was Arik from Futurely. I'll see you soon.